Have you ever walked away from a conversation sure that the other person understood all the instructions and expectations that you had? They may have even told you that they got it all and understood what you wanted. And only later, as things were going sideways, did you realize that they actually didn't fully understand what you wanted from them. I'm sure we've all had that experience and it can be exasperating. And as much as we learn from those experiences, it takes a certain skill to guarantee that all the information communicated has been received and understood as intended. In this episode, I have Lene Remondino back and we're going to discuss how to ask questions so that there are no misunderstandings. In this episode, Lene and I chatted about what clarifying questions are, why they are important from the perspective of the team member and the leader, and how a leader can get better at asking clarifying questions. If you are new to the Women Taking the Lead podcast, hello and welcome. I'm Jody Flynn. I'm the CEO and founder of Women Taking the Lead, a leadership development company that works with organizations and boards to close the performance gap by attracting, developing, and successfully promoting more women into senior levels of leadership. I help organizations realize these benefits through coaching, consulting, leadership development programs, and keynotes. If we are not already connected on LinkedIn, please send me an invitation to connect. You can find me directly at linkedin.com forward slash IN forward slash Jody Flynn, or you can search for Jody Flynn on the platform. I'm very active on LinkedIn, so I should be at or near the top of the search results. Be sure to add a note to the invitation, letting me know you're a listener of the podcast. I would love to connect with you and get to know you better. Welcome back to the Women Taking the Lead podcast, Lene. Thank you, Jody. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to have you back. And I loved the last conversation we had Me about too. communication styles and adapting to others. And today we are going to continue our series on communication. And this time we're going to focus in on clarifying questions. So let me start right off the bat with getting your take on what are clarifying questions? So to me, a clarifying question is an open-ended question that really leads another person to think rigorously, get them into some deep think and to have them come up with answers and solutions on their own. That's Mm -hmm. what I think. Yeah. What about you? I, um, when I think of clarifying questions, I really get, (laughs) I don't always do this, but for me, it's like, it gets right into the literal definition of clarifying and clarification. Like it's really trying to take, um, like things that are ambiguous, Mm -hmm. right. Or a little too broad and bring some clarity into the situation. So there are questions that, you know, tackle that situation and get more, um, distinction. Um, you mean we want clarification and communication, Jody? Uh, yeah. What? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. When we are communicating, we definitely want some clarity, get some clarification. And as a leader, this is, this is really important. But before we get into the leadership, the leadership part of it, you had some thoughts on why it's important just for anybody, right? Any team member, why do they need yeah. this? You know, I'm, I, there's so much in everything we do, we can look at the value from two different contexts. And I think as a leader, it's important that we look at the value that something returns back to somebody, a team member as well. And so for me, I think that it offers, if we ask the right questions to a team member, and we consider that our role as a leader is to create future leaders, Mm -hmm. we are actually supporting them and them coming up with the solutions and the answers. It promotes critical thinking. I think Mm -hmm. the the biggest thing about them uh, offering an answer or solution, it also allows us when that answer and solution they provide is on point, 
it allows us to build their comfort and confidence and making those decisions moving forward. And they'll retain the knowledge because they came up with the answer. So there's so many little nuggets of value there, I think, for a team member. Do you think I'm missing anything, something else you'd come up with? I don't think you're missing anything. I'm just, I really want to underscore like this really is a way to one model to the team member who yeah. may be a future leader someday. Like, here's a way to approach your team members, right? When you're a leader someday, you know, cause I, I'm in workshops and I'll often hear people say, like, oh, I really appreciated this manager that I had mm -hmm. and this was their style. And often what they're talking about is they didn't give me the answer. They asked me really good questions that got me to think, right? Because sometimes, right. you know, the team member can't see the solution because they haven't thought it through. Like there's some block in their typical way of thinking that's preventing them from seeing the situation. And these questions spur that like changing perspective, thinking, thinking of things in a different way. Yeah. And when going back to my original, like, you know, thinking about clarifying questions as providing clarity, you know, it's, it's a way, like, I think of these questions as really preventing misunderstandings and assumptions because mm -hmm. like on the part of the listener, right? Mm -hmm. So somebody is explaining something and we could just take everything at their word, right? Mm -hmm. Like they mm -hmm. have explained something to me, I walk away. And then what happens is if I then have to communicate that information to somebody else and I start getting questions, I realize I don't understand what's going on as right. much as I thought I did, right? right. So as the listener, I really want to be listening for like, what generalities or vague terms are being used here. Mm -hmm. So I want to get a little more into the weeds with clarifying questions. So yeah. just for example, and as a coach, this, this comes up often because I'm trying to really understand wh what is going on. What is the mm -hmm. situation that my client is dealing with? And when people use terms or expressions like busy mm -hmm. or um, it expensive, right? I, I want to know, well, what does, I know what that means to me. What does it mean to you? That's what right. does that term mean to you? That's a clarifying question, mm -hmm. right? So sometimes like we can make assumptions based on our own definitions of these terms. So, you know, the, the whole thing about clarifying questions and asking clarifying questions is we want to listen from the perspective of we really want to get at the heart of what is it that they're really saying. Yep. And I, I love that you said it prevents misunderstanding or assumptions, but it builds on alignment, right? It, which is really the key in any conversation is really having that alignment. Great point, Jody. And what are some examples of uh, questions that you would ask, Lene, if you're trying to get l alignment on, you know, um, a particular initiative? Wow, there's so, so many. I think it depends if the initiative is, uh, well, it depends on what the initiative is. But let's just say uh, I have given something over, I've delegated something to a team member and they're driving it. I'm beside them, but they're driving the bus. Mm -hmm. I might say, uh, so share with me a little bit around um, how you expect to initiate this into the organization. How far uh, forward thinking have you gotten with this initiative? What are some of the things that are getting in your way? What are some things that I can support you with? what have you thought about X, Y, Z? So I would just continue to ask them questions to build the framework. I'm kind of leading them with things that they might need to do, but I'm not giving them the answers per se to do it. And that's a delegation situation because mm -hmm. I have to go with an assumption. They don't know everything, but they, they're working on something and I'm letting them drive. So I really then need to let them drive. So what else is important for leaders to consider, you know, and when they're communicating with their team members, why, why would they lean into this question asking model? 
I think a lot of leaders get into tell mode, whether due to the how busy people are. When I'm facilitating or coaching to this, it's so key to help leaders understand that they are in a position to learning when they're able to lead, right? We have to listen to learn. And by asking the right questions, we're able to guide that that team member to their own, their, they come up with all of the answers, right? And, and through the information that they're sharing with us, we can, we can determine quickly whether or not we did our due diligence in setting the right expectations. We can assess where we need to lean in. And when we don't listen to learn, when we don't ask those questions, we can't often identify where to coach, what to do from there. And, and instead, we can get ourselves in trouble and just tell them what to do. And we're not really training them. Yeah, I, I completely agree with everything you're saying. As leaders, like we need a lot of information to be able to do our jobs, right? To, right. to know what motivates other people, what they understand, what their plans are. So we know where to provide you know, our leadership where it's needed, whether it's more structure or less mm -hmm. structure, more guidance or less guidance. So we have to ask those really thoughtful and thought provoking questions to get at that information. Like okay. without it, we're then, you know, just directing people right. instead right. of leading them. You know, what comes up for me is that there's this, uh, there's a, it's kind of old school, but a grow model and the O in the grow, it's an acronym and I won't bore us to tears on um, all of the details for this conversation, but the O is so significant because it's options. And I think that when we uh, frame questions around, well, what options do you have? So when somebody comes to you and says, I'm really not sure how to handle this, or I don't know what to do, or could you tell me what you would do? Why don't we talk through what you think you should do? What mm. else could you maybe do? What else could you maybe do? Like have them exhaust the options, get them into that place where they're thinking through what are all the possibilities of what they could do. And that really does allow us to see, again, the critical thinking that we're helping to create and shape for that person to be able to then take in, to move into a leadership role. Yes. So I feel like we, we've kind of covered you know, what clarifying questions are, how to formulate them so that yeah. they're open-ended, they're thoughtful, they're thought-provoking, they're relevant yeah. to the conversation yeah. that you're having. And we also talked about why it's important because you could yeah. get yourself in trouble, right? Making assumptions and not knowing exactly what is going on in a certain situation and why they they're they're good like that the positive things that can come from asking these questions in terms of developing other leaders really understanding what's needed from you as a leader how can leaders get better at this right there there's likely some women listening to this in, and some men listening to this episode and thinking that's great i wish i was really good at asking these yeah. types of questions like how do they form the habit so that it just becomes something that they do and they don't have to think hard about it yeah. So I have put people into a, the practice mode of if you go to tell somebody something, like you go to say, this is what I would do. It's going to take a minute because you're so used to being in that mode. And then that should be your aha as a leader that oh, maybe I don't use the art of questioning enough. Mm. And so in that moment, I, so I also guide people, put a little question mark on a sticky and plant it wherever you're facing most of the time, so that you are reminding yourself that no matter how you frame a statement, immediately try to reshape it as a question. And you may not be great right off the cuff of just the real open-ended questioning, but that's fairly easy when we think about the who, what, where, when, and why, right? It, it's mm -hmm. how do we then, but it's really more getting yourself in the habit and it's kind of contradictory to what we grew up with as children. Don't ask, don't ask, don't 
answer a question with a question. Mm -hmm. But as leaders, we do want to kind of push back a little bit and get them to and to find out what our team member already knows. So that would be one tip I would say is just start practicing when you tell somebody something, uh, frame it, reframe it into any question that you can possibly think of. Yeah. I like how you pointed out, like, here's some phrases that if you're saying them, that's, that's an indication that maybe you're going down the right, the wrong, actually, let me take that back, that you're going down the wrong path. So starting off by saying, here's what I would do, or uh, like another favorite of mine is here's what you should do. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Here's what you should do. Right. And (laughs) qualifier. If it's a state of emergency, like really, like somebody's injured or sick or like something's happening really fast, (laughs) go into being more directive, right? That's what the situation calls for. Nobody wants empowering or clarifying questions unless you need information, you know, in which case you're probably rapid firing, like yes or no questions, specific one word answers. You're not looking for you know, you're not looking to get into a transformational process or anything at that point, but that not being the our reality 99% of the time in the other 99% of our time, we should be careful of hearing ourselves saying, this is what I would do, or this is what you should do, right? Take a step back and ask more questions and see what the other person would come up with. Mm -hmm. What else? Um, you know, I think this, it just takes practice and practice. This is not, it's not easy when we've had other leaders that have led us with this style of tell mode and, and guiding by doing what I say and, 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 and putting us in that position, we tend to think that's the way it should be. So we, we've got some habits to break. I think the best thing is to be kind to ourselves also and remind us that at any given moment, we get redos with people. Mm -hmm. So if you do start to get break your habit, you start to go back into your old habits, just say, Nope, you know what, I was just about to tell you what I was going to do. I want to rewind, I want to redo. I want to ask you, what do you think we should do? And that's normal. And it's okay. And I I think we just just as simple as that, just try practicing that every time you go to tell somebody, what you think they should do. I think that's great advice for you and I to take too, to remember that it's okay. (laughs) It's it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay for the whole process to be a little bit messy. There was another acronym I thought of um, that I learned when I was training to be a coach and it's WAIT, W-A-I-T. And it stands for, why am I talking? Mm, That's great. Right. So as a leader and when we're in these types of conversations, your your conversation, your side of the conversation, you want it to be minimal. That's right. That's right. It's like interviewing. Right. You want you want the other person to do most of the talking so you can learn whether this is somebody that would fit your culture or the more you get them talking. It's no different all the way through the process in leadership. And I think that's key is. Stop and listen just why are you talking? What What is your main point of talking? And I think leaders feel like they need to talk because they have to set that expectation. No, what you need to do is know, do they understand the expectation without you having to regurgitate it? And I think that's where we make a lot of mistakes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I always love that question. Okay. What did you take away from what I just shared, right? So if I needed to share some information, what did you take away from that? You know, so that we know. I love that you said that because again, it's woven into every bit of what we do as leaders. This isn't just when you're delegating or when this is and and everything you do from the moment somebody is being onboarded and you're training them, the art of questioning starts then to the one you just said. It's, It's a key question what did you just take from what I just shared? How Mm -hmm. did you receive it? Uh, What do you think that we need to do based on these expectations? What would be the next step? I think there that starts all the way through the whole process. And the more, again, leaders listen to learn and ask these questions, the more value we get in helping stretch our team members. Yeah. 
Absolutely. And I'm thinking about the environments that a lot of people are finding themselves in right now where they might be short staffed. There's been turnover. They're trying to ramp up new employees and that sort of thing. And it's kind of an all hands on deck and it can feel really busy. And when we get busy, we start stepping over these important practices because Mm -hmm. it takes time, right? To have a conversation. It's not like, yeah, here's what you need to do. Boom, 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 go. Right. right. Because I'm also having conversations with clients who kind of defaulted into that communication style of being directive and people are not meeting expectations because they don't understand the expectations because they skipped over the Mm check-in of what did you understand from what I just told you? Is there another way you would do this? You yeah. know, like, how do you yeah. see the situation like that? T- it takes a little bit of time to ask these questions, but they're so important. Well, and I think that there's so much value in that t- that team member. We have to realize that based on all the questions that we're asking these team members, that that doesn't mean that we, to you, I think you said earlier, we won't go back to resetting the expectation. Like if they say that they don't get it, then we re level set and we, we tell them again. And then we reiterate with another question of, okay, tell me what you took from that. Or can you Mm -hmm. show me how you would do this? And I think that that's a whole nother component of just having people, our leaders thinking through whether or not they are just trying to reload with what they want to say to somebody in a conversation, or they want to go back and forth in a conversation, or do they want to really open up dialogue that will allow them to gain more information or new information. Right. And I think that's really important. Do you have a challenge to share and would be willing to share with others? There's so much that can be gained by listening to what another woman is going through and to understanding the strategy that she will implement to overcome the challenge. I've seen this in the group that is currently going through the Positive Intelligence Program. One woman shares a particular struggle she's having, and at least two others, if not all of the other women in the group, acknowledge they have had or currently have the same challenge. It's validating for all and beneficial to talk about the approaches that have been tried and which help the situation. For this reason, I would love to do more on-air coaching calls on this podcast. If you're a woman leader who's been promoted or taken on a new role in the last year, I invite you to apply to be on the Women Taking the Lead podcast. You will be completely anonymous, so you won't need to worry about anyone you work with listening to you talk about your challenges. You will gain insights and strategies to overcome any challenges you've been faced with at work and Other women listening to your episode will learn from your experience and gain insights they can use at work. You can find the link that will take you to the application in the episode description in your podcast app, or if you're listening on the Women Taking the Lead website, it will be at the bottom of the episode page. If you've been considering, I say do it. Submit the application. You and I can chat. At the very least, you will have explored the opportunity. I'm kind of chuckling here because oftentimes if you ask a closed-ended question such as, did you understand what I... I did. Yep. We're good. Yep. Yep. (laughs) Yes, I did. Right? I mean, they do understand what they took away from it, Mm -hmm. but do they understand what you wanted them to take away from it, right? Because our brains will fill in the gaps, right? I talked about how I get information from somebody. If I don't ask clarifying questions, I walk away. And then all of a sudden, you know, I'm talking, sharing it with the next person and they have all sorts of questions that I can't answer. And then I realize I have gaps in knowledge because I just quickly was like, yep, got it. I'll go share it with the next person. So I think when, as leaders, when we get into that, that you, you nailed it with being busy or, you know, there's too much people think that coaching 
is it, it takes too long or I don't have time to listen to all their options. I don't have time to listen to how they might do it because then that's going to cause me more time because what if they don't know how to do it and I just need them to get it done. And so how do we help leaders understand that there is value in doing this now and asking these questions now to help level set the team member now versus the time and energy they will lose over time and the disservice that we do by just saying, so how's it going? Oh, it's great. Versus tell me what, what are you learning through this process? Tell me what your takeaways have been. Tell me where I can support you and fill in the gap. Just the value of what that provides us today versus later. What would you tell people about that, Jody? Well, absolutely. I, you know, it's <laughs> one of those things like if you don't have time to do it right the first time, you'll have to make time okay. to do it, right, to fix it, right? To fix it and do it right over the second and time. Over and over again. <laughs> right. I, you know, and, and I feel for people who are feeling rushed and pressured for time and that sort of thing. And it can feel really counterintuitive. But when we are talking about initiatives and making sure our team members understand what they're trying to accomplish, what the goal is, you know, that, that is time well spent, Yeah, you know, cause like you said, it like, it can just having to retrain somebody yeah. is so time consuming that, you know, look at this as an investment on the front end That's that right. will save you time in the long run, right? Because if we're training our team members to answer these types of questions, they start doing it on their own, even yeah. before they come to us. It gets to a point, and I, I've had this with team members where when they're presenting about how they're going to tackle an initiative, they answer most of the questions I would have had before I have to ask the first one, but that takes time, right? right? It takes getting them into the mindset of going through a checklist of questions and making sure that they're looking at a situation from multiple perspectives to look for multiple solutions uh, for to get there. But it's, it's so worth it. Cause once you're there, you're like, it's almost like you'd like, you know, that, that I'm, I'm making the hand motion cause Lene can hear me, but of like <laughs> wiping your hands, like my work here is done. <laughs> right. I can teach you no more. Right. That's right. Well, I think that the leaders need to also appreciate the fact that as they do this, they're building partners for them. They're helping people take the bandwidth and supporting other components to drive their part of the business where we often put the weight of the world on our shoulders. And, and the more we can dedicate this time on the front end, they th we have that. But you know what's interesting as you were talking, I often hear the other side of this is not just the Telmo, but I think some leaders fear, at least I hear this in my coaching sessions, well, what if they don't have the answer? <laughs> and I'm like, so what if they don't? How about, because we do know from our first series the, on communication and adapting styles and, and right, that there are some people that are more methodical thinkers. So let's not let them off the hook. I think sometimes we don't give people enough credit to be able to think through some of these things because we're so quick to give them the answers. Whereas let's say, you know, I absolutely understand that I just threw that curveball to you and I, I put you in the hot seat. So let me tell you, let's just do this. Why don't we convene again tomorrow at two yes. and give you some time to think about it. Come to the, come to the table with some ideas and what you would like to do. Let's put everything out there and see what we come up with together. So you're not leaving them alone. You're not saying you won't guide them if they really do need it. But I, I think we give the answer way too quickly and we shouldn't fear if they don't know the question. Or Way to bring it back question. to communication styles, Lene. That was yeah. perfect because, yes, our faster paced, you know, styled mm -hmm. individuals, right? The um, D style and I style in the disc and the B style and E style in the best model, yeah. 
they are faster paced. They're more outgoing, right? They, they mm-hmm. tend to be the extroverts in the crowd. So they'll, they're thinking on their feet. They think out loud. Whereas the more methodical and slower paced individuals. So this would be the C style and the S style for disc and the S and the T style for, uh, the best That's model. Good. Slow. They're more introverted, slower paced. So in this conversation, exactly how you put it, you might have to say like, here's what I want you to think about. And let's set up a time tomorrow to come back and talk through it. Right. That's like right. just because somebody has a different communication style doesn't mean the conversation doesn't happen. It just happens at a different uh, tempo. Yeah. But it goes back to your point. They're busy. Do we have time for that? Again, it, this I loved your disclosure a little earlier that this isn't when you, you have, you have, you may not always have time to wait, but a lot of the times, especially if we're in the mindset of coaching, that is where we, we really can't afford not to wait. We really can't afford to not have them thinking critically right out of the gate and allowing us to learn how to help guide and and navigate. And here we go. I'm going to build on that. Yeah. Even in the situations where it was an emergency and you needed to move fast and be directive, you have the post, what we used to call, it's a little morbid, the postmortem. My, my boss today just said that word. And I said exactly what you just said. That's a little morbid. Maybe we, in the military, we call it an after action review. I'm an army brat. So the AAR, but <laughs> the postmortem, yes. but you're right. right. That's when you go back. How would we, you know, how, or like if it's a teaching moment, how would you have done that? Or how would you have done that differently? What did I miss? What, you know, what information would have been good to have in that moment? How can we get better by looking back on when we did have to move really fast? So just because you're looking at that type of situation doesn't mean that at some point clarifying questions and empowering questions don't come back into the mix. For I love development. That you said that. That's right. Because then it also is allowing them to realize for me, what I hear when you say that is we can always do better. So when you do an after action re- review or whatever you want to call it, it's it's also to remind us that we're not always so stuck in one way. And I think leaders sometimes do feel again the weight of the world and uh, they have to make this decision and then they can, we can get in a rut because we do it every day or we, we continue to make the same decision. But doing that allows uh, for more voices in the room to also think about how can we do things differently? Is there, is there a way? And again, building future leaders, you're allowing them to see that process that you don't want to just do what you've always done. Right. I love that you added that. Yep. Innovation, right? It's building one idea on top of the other, getting different perspectives and thinking about, well, what if we did this? Well, oh, that's Mm -hmm. a great idea. But what if we did it this way? Oh, that's a great idea. But what if we did it in this timeline? What if we did it with this audience or population, that sort of thing, right? It's, it's building, but it takes encouraging people to Mm -hmm. share their ideas, share their thoughts and how they would do it. Right. Yeah. I um, think it, it's important when you, when you, I love the word innovation. I'm so glad that you said it. Uh, even going back to the options, mod, like using what are your options? It, it does do that, doesn't it? It's yeah. all about innovation and being creative and not being so locked into only one idea and thinking that there are multiple ways to doing everything. And it opens the mind of a leader. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, I often talk about how in a mentoring relationship, the mentee brings as much to the table as the mentor does, and they can teach the mentor as much as the mentor can teach them because they have a different perspective, right? Mm -hmm. And they probably have some knowledge that the mentor doesn't have. We can't all know all things. We need other people to add to the pool of knowledge that we all have collectively. But if we're not asking questions and we're not inviting other people to develop and share, you know, their perspective, we're going to miss out on that knowledge. That's right. Well, Lene, was there anything I missed, anything I should have asked or anything you wanted to add to this? No, I uh, think, again, just practicing 
the just questions, doing it at home, even if you have children, if you've got, so whoever it is in your world, uh, again, it's all about guiding and coaching. We use this a lot in the framework of work, but practice this wherever you can and try having a conversation with somebody with all you, with all that you do is ask them questions back to back to back and see how much information you can learn and how much knowledge that other person has that you may not have picked up on originally. Right. And not like in a grilling way, in a conversational way. I use this as an exercise in one of my workshops when I'm teaching coaching skills to leaders is, and it's for five minutes in the conversation. Now there is a couple other skills that they can use. One thing they cannot do is talk about themselves or share anything or say anything like me too. Mm-hmm. or that happened to me. Mm. They acknowledge and validate what the person just said to them and they follow up with a question. I and the that. whole conversation is either acknowledging and validating and and or asking a question. I love this. For me, when I'm coaching, I use this also as a framework for the art of questioning and clarifying and is really, even if somebody even when somebody does something not so great. It doesn't have to be such a big thing that where we could say, so how do you think that went? What do you think you could have done differently? How do you think you'll be able to handle that in the future? What is something that you would try on? Do you want to practice it now? Like there's, there's so many questions that it feels less, uh, I don't want to say intrusive, but or negative or counseling, when instead of you going to somebody and saying, hey, you did this wrong, it it allows for a the flow of this team member to realize potentially on their own, oh, yeah, I could have done that better. Here's mm-hmm. what I think I could have done. And then they own their stuff more. You own yours as a leader, and that builds trust. There's so many things that I think the art of questioning really solidifies for us with our teams. Well, I have a feeling that as we progress in other episodes in this series, we're going to be coming back to the art of questions because it is, it is magical. It really is. I'm so glad that we're aligned with that. And I, I hope everybody really sees the value in this once they start practicing it. What were your takeaways from my conversation with Lene? Did you realize you ask clarifying questions all the time? Or did you realize you need to start making these questions part of your everyday conversations? Head over to LinkedIn to share your thoughts and takeaways on the post corresponding to this episode. I would love to hear what stood out most for you. And if your last promotion has you experiencing and confronting challenges you haven't faced before, consider working with me. I would love to support you through this transition, help you get your bearings and feeling confident in your leadership once again. You can find a link to schedule a time to chat with me in the episode description. If you're listening through a mobile device, that link will be in your podcast app. And if you're listening through the Women Taking the Lead website, the link will be toward the bottom of the episode webpage. As always, I hope this was of value to you and here's to your success. 